Greetings and salutations, gamers. Welcome to Cast Co-op, the podcast in which three podcast hosts cast together. I am one of your hosts, Luke Lore, the Incipit Ghost and host of the Xbox Expansion Pass. Today, I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend. He's back and better than ever, Mr. Ainsley Bowden. Hello, sir. What's going on? Better than ever is a, that's a stretch. That's a really big stretch. But, you know, I'm doing all right. Hanging in, living life um life kicking me in the teeth here and there like it does everyone you know it happens so it does but no hey, you've, I'm been, doing you've right. been to the ringer and it's good to doing see right. you back brother it's good to see yeah you man back. it's good to try and get back into some sort of rhythm here in cadence uh the channel's gone to shit the site's down you know it's a mess but we'll get it back it's no worries. with the site's down so, yeah, what? site's not down. I mean, like the traffic is down. Oh, yeah, we're both. Yeah. I think we're all suffering yeah. that. We're the, all the, suffering the channel. That. We took a, like a week and a half off the channel, and YouTube was like, "Yeah, you're dead. Forget yeah. it." Yeah, <laughs> go to hell, you guys. Yeah. No, yeah. that that's been happening across the board. I went to Pax East. Everybody, please clap. Mm -hmm. And like that was the <laughs> common theme uh, of like every creator going, "Hey, is it the apocalypse for you? Because it seems like the apocalypse for it's, me. It's a mess, man. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing the the thing where I'm investigating, like. I was telling you prior to recording, switching to, to recording live, trying to do channel membership, setting up kind of a new avenue because socials are down. So now that I'm trying to open <laughs> Twitter's doors, a mess, like, YouTube's a mess. Yeah, right. So I'm trying to open doors to connect with my people because like some people don't want to do Patreon. Some people don't want to do Discord. So I'm trying to find ways to connect that, you know, more people can access. And it's it's just it's a it's a, we are changing along with the console spaces, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, very much so. Very much Let, so. Yeah. I didn't introduce uh, P. Diddy's number one fan, uh, <laughs> Mr. Joseph Moran. Um, uh, it's fan I, and customer. Fan, fan and, and customer. customer. That's right. I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Welcome, <laughs> Joseph Moran, host of the Trophy Room, fan of the Diddler. What you got, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> my my channel was just flagged again. I, Thanks. I, yeah, well, <laughs> I've never been to an island. <laughs> I was just perusing <laughs> nothing out of the ordinary. They uh, told me it was an all-inclusive vacation. Well, I don't know exactly, what happened. Exactly. I was snorkeling. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, you were. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah, you did not know how old you were. No, it's fine. <laughs> what the fuck? Listen, guys. Jesus. <laughs> Mary and Joseph. You know what? This is Ains' channel. I'm trying to yeah, keep it. Right. I know. My ch uh, it's whatever. You know, I don't care Jesus. at this point. Um. No, I was just going to say, I got a weird comment on the latest Trophy Room episode on YouTube. Because mm -hmm. usually you get, like, spam bots. This one, mm -hmm. they literally gave me, like, a prayer. A prayer? So, yeah, they're like, our Heavenly Father, your son, Jesus Christ. Born right Christ. There. And I'm like, they're getting, I'm like, oh, my God. Is this is Jehovah. Go. Easter's right. coming up. Is that what it is? Well, hopefully it was, go. like... They're not like wishing me into eternal damnation, uh, but <laughs> we're all I know. I mean, we do. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Luke, you were on the Epstein list. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I was fine until they caught Jay Z. Uh, I don't know what no. to do. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Jesus! It turns out that how, how deep does this go? I don't know. <laughs> I'd like it to stop now, to be honest. It's, <laughs> it's wild. Guys, we've yeah. missed so much. It's been yeah. nine weeks since the last time we, we caught I don't up. know. We, we, we look, we actually, I'll look. Family stuff. It, it's been a lot. I'm still like, it's been a while. Helldivers <laughs> came out. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came out. Dragon's Dogma 2 came out. Yep. yep. And we said Sweet. nothing. Sweet Baby Ink had its thing. Yeah. Xbox. Died, came back, you died that again. Whole list, Luke, and you're really <laughs> proud of it. <laughs> I, I am. I, I will say, I have really been fascinated. I don't know. We don't need to make this a full topic, but I will okay. note, I have been really fascinated watching the Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, whirlwind because you've had people be trying to be very rational to discuss diversity, equity, and inclusion. You've had people losing their minds that. A character of color or a girl would be in existence in a video game and everywhere How between dare she and yeah and somewhere in there is <coughs> excuse me the truth and i'm really curious kind of <clears throat> what we learned from it down the line 
I think one of the things you said that you learned is that we should never have given women the right to vote. <laughs> I think you said that. It was like, that's where everything started going downhill. I don't know. It's it's crazy. Luke can't comment anything back. No, that that whole thing. It's, all right, in seriousness, that whole situation <laughs> is just. I've been looking at it from the outside, yeah. Just because it's just so how it's devolved into just weird racist stuff. Yeah, like so fast. It always does. It always it does. Always yeah. comes like back. Now you have Grums or whoever the the guy that pretended he helped made Wow. So so um, yeah. Pause on that real quick because yeah. to anybody who's unfamiliar with Grums, if you just clicked his profile, I, like, I don't oh, know this. who you're talking about. So he worked on World of Warcraft and was fairly okay. high up at Blizzard, I believe, at the time. Yeah. Okay. And like, if you just click his profile, and you're like, oh, this dude was a high level developer. He's got experience in the industry. I'm sure he's insightful. Dude, he's the quartering. <laughs> he is the quartering. Yeah. Oh, best okay. Friend. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's like, so you start and you're like, oh, I think maybe. And then you're like, oh, I don't like Oh, him. no. Yeah, oh, no. no. What I happened here? No. And he gets in. <laughs> he gets... <laughs> God damn it, Luke. Come on. Sorry. 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 Ryan, he gets <laughs> back. Are you ready? You can do it. No, still not. All right. Here he is. He gets in fights with people who are the opposite end of that spectrum. So you got these two really it's 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 the election all over again. And it's like, That's, hey, what are you doing? It's only gonna get worse this year, too. Exactly. Oh, no. As we get deeper and deeper. That because that's what I would truly think. Part of it is like there if there is an election year, everybody's kind of miserable about it. Um, and like we're we're turning these like we're dying on these molehills for nothing. And like to me, it's like the best the best case of an action is to just ignore those people and just carry on the mute button is beautiful the block button oh, is yeah. beautiful. just mute them and move on i've gotten people that yell at me all the time over dumb shit and mm. i just now it's i used to mute now i just go in, into block and mm. i think honestly from the outside looking in because if y'all don't know you know the sweet baby ink stuff uh just a loser on the internet made a list on steam going like hey guys does anybody get the feeling women in games are getting uglier <laughs> and like you know there's not enough white dudes in games or whatever um i mean they are and, getting uglier you know well luke you made the list you helped curate it <laughs> and you know it, it, they they kind of did their own investigative journalism air quotes on that heavy air quotes they heavy did their own research and their yeah. own research uh and you know they kind of saw that this consulting firm worked on games like spider-man ragnarok and they just made a list going sweet baby ink detection right. um and the fact of the matter is it's a dumb list and you don't you know you may have the quote-unquote freedom of speech but i have the you know you, you don't have the freedom of consequence i could call you a dumb loser moron uh right. for making the list it's fine but the list to me deserves to exist it's like I agree too. it's there yeah. And I think their problem was they went, okay, well, we're going to try to get that list down, try to ban that user. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, this guy becomes a martyr for something that is, you know, has, it, it always was uh, incredibly toxic. Which, so. which is very silly, by the way. The list exists, and that's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. That's literally like a link. To, it's a resume. It's like, we worked on X. We worked on yeah. Y. Okay, fine. Whether it, so included in there was Spider-Man 2, amazing game. Yeah. You know, uh, including there was Suicide Squad. People are very hostile towards that one, right? Who who cares? You worked on it. It's what you do. You consult. You didn't make the game, mm -mm. right? The problem is you had Extremist A made a list. Extremist B it, at Sweet Baby Inc. argued back and tried to get someone banned sillily because why be upset about a list? And then the, Str the Streisand effect caused just this massive and then you have like rate. the weirdest thing going on where you have like these purity tests on these you know what we could only call you know the, these like the right wing side of the the game reverse where you have like all of a sudden you know these uh alt-right people coming in like matt walsh going like oh they're making games woke and you have these people that have legitimate gripes going whoa you Dude, you just called us cucks like three weeks ago for playing video games. You shut up. You don't. This isn't. I don't even know who this guy is. Who's that this guy? Is ah, he's just like a right wing pundit, dude. Okay. He has a beard and glasses, and he uh, 
his wife's very dry. That's all you need to know. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, it's the weird purity tests that are going on. And then it's just like, I see a lot of my, my Jewish friends, uh, you know, my female friends, you know, just quote, like in these arguments with these p- people, just saying some of the heinous sh- like shit I've ever seen. And I'm just like, guys, you just got to block and move on, man. Yeah. Who cares? Just block. Just them. Ignore these, it. these people are, <laughs> are children. And, you know, to me, it's like, if you just, if you just have a conversation with the folks that are willing to have a conversation, mm-hmm. that's great. If you're just talking to people that are calling you, you know, like, like weird Jewish slurs, it's like, well, maybe you just, mute them because they're weirdo people you do what you would do in public just walk away and give them the side eye that's it um but i don't know that whole situation is just it's gross it really is ains you were away from the game reverse did you catch wind of i like being away i like being away. nice so i guess the question is like being away did you hear about it because i wonder if this is a big deal outside of the social spaces i don't think it is no, I, I only heard about it when I came back into the Gamerverse here on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, Hogue did a video on it. Um, so, you know, check that out um, for a little bit. But that's it. Yeah. yeah. It's it just, I don't know. It feels like um, it feels like the toxicity in online is being spread more thoroughly nowadays in all facets. And I really, really despise how we have to circle back on the the racist, sexist, anti-feminism, you know, all this stuff. Woke's just another word for it. DEI is more words for it. They just use this to, to um, you know, explain away their uh, their bigotry. And it's it's just exhausting. Yeah. And, and it's it's not going to go away. I mean, this has gone on for centuries and millennia. Um, but, you know, it's just exhausting. So I think Joe's right. Like, you just got to suck the air out of the room, right? You see anything like that, I immediately mute, immediately block. That's actually what I pulled my phone up for because I was looking to see if I had hit 3,000 accounts yet, muted and blocked. And I'm close. Mm. I'm at like 29 something. Ooh, so, I got to see what I'm at. But yeah. I do the same thing. Like, And sometimes like I'll see a thread like that, a toxic mm-hmm. one, and I'll go into the thread just so I can mute everybody. Yeah. Like, oh, that's bang, smart. Bang, 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 bang. Just get rid of them all. Uh, yeah. so I realize I don't I see had... a lot of it, but. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I'm done. I realized that I, I was like, I mean, obviously, Twitter social algorithms have really changed a lot, and it's been kind of <laughs> difficult, you know, for content creators. But I was like, I'm not seeing a lot of the Xbox people even that I used to see. And I'm like, oh, wait, I muted kids move and such and such and such and such and such. Right. Just so like, I don't want their toxicity. I don't want the vitriol that that so many of them bring. And it has made my circle smaller, harder for discovery and such. But I also don't interact with them, which yeah. is not bad either. No, which like, it's a nice thing. For the for the four little minute rant that I had there, it's like that's as <laughs> as far as I I'm willing to go. Like I understand like there's tweets that like some of the folks at that company have made that aren't the the coolest shit. I wouldn't have never said, uh, but it's just like okay, cool. I I don't like to me when I come into games and I talk about games, uh, this stuff isn't isn't something I want to talk about because it's like my escapism. Mm-hmm. And so when I see that stuff, I'm like, you guys are just, you guys like understand that like you're, you're a dying breed yeah. that like the, the industry itself has become more diverse. Just take a snapshot of what E3 was back in the early two thousands and mm-hmm. what it is now. And you just see like, look how many awesome like creators of color there are that weren't here like 10 plus years ago, weren't prevalent like right. uh, 10 plus years ago. Right. Like we don't have yeah. people like Paris, like uh cog or Khalif in, in these spaces. And now we do. And those people are inspiring more people of color to go and cover games. So it's just like, yeah, no, I get it. We're still serving for the most part, a majority of, of white folks that play games, but that is changing as more people get passionate about games mm-hmm. and enter the space and fight mm-hmm. for their, for, for their right to just exist here. <clears throat> Yeah, no, it's it's changing. So for me, I embrace the change. I, I think like to me, the character from Fable that we saw can exist, and the chick from Stellar Blade can exist. Those things can coexist together. Mm-hmm. They're not like you know the poster childs of either sides of these things. It's just the you know the swath of gaming that is. You know, if you want right. your Go. you know weird, you know. I don't know, lady with a blade fetish like the rest of the internet and myself. You got Stellar Blade, and if you want to make your character, you know, look like whatever, Fable's gonna be it for you. So mm-hmm. to me, it's just it's 
I don't know. It's it's not even a big deal. So when well, I see there. these like losers yell, I'm just like, you guys are just losers yelling. I just want to. I the, the the ridiculous thing too, and and I've seen these comparisons as well between like Stellar Blade and Fable. It's like Fable is supposed to be a fantasy game in what would be like not maybe medieval times, but you know what I mean, that type of era, right? So <laughs> the women aren't looking like they do in still you know in Stellar Blade. Like there's mm -hmm. a point to the design of characters as well that people are completely missing, right? Um, but the to your point about gaming, I think one of the things that annoys me in modern gaming space, uh, one of the few things, because I think gaming's better than it's ever been holistically. Um, but I talk about this with COG. I talk about it with a lot of old heads, uh, um, you know, who have been around uh, as long as I have, um, mm -hmm. who grew up in the Atari era and stuff. Back when, you know, their gaming was that niche where right. it was, you were a geek if you were a gamer, period. You were looked at as a nerd. You were looked at as a geek. You were looked at as playing with children's toys. Um, and there was a camaraderie there in that time that I think is still there to a degree, but I guess the point I'm making is it's weird because I think about all the people I grew up with and gamed with and talked to school with and played in the arcade with, we mm -hmm. were from literally all over. There right. were, you know, every race, every ethnicity, background, you know, it none of it mattered. And I talk about that all the time because gaming used to be the thread that no matter where you came from, how much money you had, what your background was, it brought you together. And I hate seeing in modern gaming that gaming has now gotten so prevalent, which is a good thing. Right. But, of course, it brings with it some of these things where you lose. You lose that kind of niche feel where mm -hmm. all gamers were just loving games and, you know, um, doing it together as kind of a collective thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, I do miss that sort of environment at times. Yeah. I've, I've noticed that <laughs> with uh, superheroes because I was always the odd one out. I was the high school. Comic books were the same way. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Right. Like, I, I love that. But. I was very much alone. Like I was the only one on the soccer team that was like, yo, you're going to play Sega. They're like, we're going to go smoke. And I was like, I'm not cool. I don't, I want to go play Spider-Man. I want to go watch the read a comic or watch a movie. <clears> or something. <throat> and so to see it come mainstream and now superheroes are exiting mainstream. Now they're on the decline and it's like, well, no, I still like them. <laughs> and, it, and it's, it's, it's still like the ebb and flow. And I think gaming has gotten too big to maybe that's not the right word it's gotten so big that your niche thing that you're comfortable in has been invaded by those that just want to be loud and be heard yeah and that's that's i think it. um or sardana's is i'm sorry but i that's can't Sardin 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 Sardinism. That's Sardinism. Sardinism. there you go she she sorry she. My, my apologies uh do you think people are trying to recreate the camaraderie by excluding people from the group yes 100%. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we all do. Once like the tent gets too big, well now we got to create separate rooms in this tent. Um, you know, clicks. that's yeah, you got to get those clicks in. Like, you know, you have the Xbox click, you have the uh <clears throat> PlayStation click, you have the PC click, they're gross. Uh you have the Nintendo click, they're eating glue. <laughs> um and like yeah. you have those <laughs> communities and some of them we see them go back and mm -hmm. forth like every time like Dragon's Dogma I saw all the nerds going, oh, let me count the frames, uh, see which version's better. Um, you know, you have, like, Nintendo folks that, like, oftentimes are like, but how big of a Nintendo fan are you? Right. Like, it's it's like, so you do have, like, niches within the niches. And so, yeah, no, it's definitely one of those things. You want to feel like you belong to a group. And you're right, Ains. Back in the, like, well, for you, 1800s, but for most folks, 80s, 90s um <laughs> how did you meet fellow nerds in the arcade in the mall mm -hmm. right and you're like and you're like you're playing whatever what what, what did you have hoop and a stick games <laughs> like, uh, ball in a cup. he had ball, ball in a cup, ball ball in a cup. cup. <laughs> right Dust, um ball. no yeah. no back in the day it was you know you put you either were beating high scores or yeah. once the fighting game era came so, as particularly with street fighter 2 and mortal Kombat, it was quarter up Right. Yeah. And so it was quarter up. And it, again, I always love it because, I, you know, how competitive I am. It was mm -hmm. all about skill. Right. So it's like you get on, you win, you talk shit and there's your camaraderie is built mm -hmm. just from the competition. Yeah. Um, yeah. I well, had I have great memories of sitting in like literal crowds around like MK2 and Street Fighter 2 of, you know, 20, 30 people huddled around all night long, just putting quarters up rows of quarters and just taking turns and everyone bullshitting and having a great time. Yeah. Man, I miss those days. Hey, the the closest Go for it. <clears throat> well, let's say the closest thing I have, I have two memories in college. One was where I taught everybody in the dorms how to get their Xboxes online because we had to, you had to trick the IPs back in the day to think it was your laptop. 
because you had to yeah. change the MAC address and everything. So yeah, that yeah, was yeah. that was a cool one. We were all had our doors open. We were playing the Gears of, Gears of War one, uh, which was really fun. And then another one where we were playing Mario Strikers and Smash Brothers on GameCube down in the basement on the big screen TV and the TV in the dorms. Like that was the best I got in those community moments. But apart from that, it's either been kind of where we are now or I was playing Middle Gear Solid alone and that nobody knew what that was yeah. in school. And so I was just the kid reading the magazines. And know? we got to find a way to get back to it. And that's it goes back to just, man, I, there was like a, I think it was like a study or so, some research firm where it's like what we're finding out about social media is people actually want to curate it more and not just find like the large bubbles of things, but like they just really want it to be a close knit thing with friends. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to somehow find or our platform needs to be made where that's kind of the thing. Uh, because right now the best you have, if you're on the social spaces, is just block mute, ignore um, mm -hmm. and because the algorithm's so messed up wherever you are. Um, it just rewards the people that are super loud and have agendas already made um, right. and grifters ready to grift. That said, yeah. I didn't want to go this long on this topic. I really wanted <laughs> to talk about why Xbox is dead. Christopher. Can I make Drew? one point? Want to make okay, one point? Fine. I'm sorry. Fine. You're, yeah, you I want to go about the death of Xbox. Okay? But I will, I will say, I think we are a, we are doing that to an extent. I speak very highly about my discord. I noticed that, Bitcast chat is is regularly quite positive. We see the Nisa and Nerd Chat and Sardanus uh, in our chats here regularly. Clint showed up. I know I saw Rick in there. Like we are creating that. Oh yeah, right. Like we are able to create that. It's just hard. And and like I go back to the beginning of the shows. Like trying to find ways to connect as our spaces are changing, like the consoles are. I think that's the hard part too. Yeah, like I love the trophy room Discord. It's the best. It, it yeah, means a lot when they show up. Yeah, that's what, yeah, I was going to say, that's a good call out, Luke, because we each do our part in that effort of kind of curating the positive gaming audience. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked endlessly on here and our own shows about that, but it, it is mm -hmm. important. And that's why, like, I know we've talked about this in DM sometimes because content creation is an uh, M effort at times. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, it can be time consuming and um, uninspiring at times and you can get mm -hmm. down and things don't go as planned and all those other things. Yeah. Um, but what always brings me back is knowing the, the people like the people here hanging out with us, the people mm -hmm. that show up at BitCast or your guys' shows and chat with us on Discord. Like there is a community there that's been, um, earned and curated that I really, really appreciate. And some genuinely fantastic people I've met mm -hmm. through this medium now in the modern age, you know, like last five, 10 years, um, that I really appreciate. So yeah. agreed. All right. Now agreed. can we talk about the death of Xbox? Because well I really, I really want to talk about it. We have to because yes. it's those people that want to that want to play Xbox that are now having to find new spaces. You know, just the reality of it. Yeah, really? I've actually sold all three of mine, my yeah. series consoles. Oh, I was so. about to throw it in the trash. Yeah. So the trash. I, I've had this weird thing lately where you know, as Xbox is very much becoming third party, and I don't think that is a uh, the death of Xbox, but we're seeing their console sales down. Uh, we're seeing them. Flatline in Europe, which Chris Drink took a whole lot of heat just for reporting what he heard. Uh, and he's a reputable reporter at literally gameindustry.biz. They have a wonderful track record. But he got thoroughly attacked for pointing out that Xbox is flatlining, something that anybody that's paid attention has known, that console sales are in decline, despite, I would argue, Xbox's best hardware being available now. Um, mm -hmm. Xbox being at one of its best places, given that they have back and pat play anywhere, Game Pass, uh it's a fantastic platform it it's really such is a great yeah. platform but i i think halo's poor launch <laughs> halo's i didn't hear you launch, i didn't hear you he said but the we're losers <laughs> um, <laughs> but i really think halo infinite's poor launch meant that this season jump or this uh this the series sx like this generation's jump for xbox the chance to to change minds was hampered by both that and then COVID hit and x and playstation had it's single player experiences, rock and ready to roll. Um, and it just changed the course of this industry. And Xbox, to my ver to my argument, would be they very much knew this was going to happen. That's why they instituted PC. That's why they allowed their stuff to started testing the waters of going 
uh, onto other platforms. That's why they built some of these online games that are now and entering other spaces. That's why they bought Activision. They allow themselves to venture into places where, where the, their console will no longer be successful. And I'm curious if if I'm just off my rocker, because I do think the Xbox box is in trouble and Xbox itself is just fine. I think Rick in chat ha- is even pointing that out. Um, Go on, you can read it. Uh, it says Luke. When you post- yeah. Here, when you sorry, post sorry. About- I, I, I could help you. Thank you. Go. I was trying to read two <clears> different chats. <throat> um, the Xbox box on Twitter, you really riled a few people up. They felt the need to show a ton of charts of meaningless info to dispute your claims. Yeah. People were, were getting <laughs> all in their feelings about it. But you can't argue that Xbox is putting their stuff in multi-platform. They purchased Activision Blizzard, which has Warcraft, Diablo, Call of Duty, Candy Crush, all multi-platform experiences. And literally, I did it on point. Call of Duty Mobile, Warzone Mobile just launched. This is now part of the Xbox family. Like, they are purposely building themselves to not be a an Xbox box. Yeah. It's just, it, it's very strange to me, the reactions. I mean, I'll be honest. I, I was a little shocked at the numbers in Europe. So um, I'm saying, sure. Because I was like, you know, you're seeing a dip in, you know, PlayStation 2%, I think the number is. I'm like, okay, all right. That's mm-hmm. kind of what Hiroki Totoki was, was talking about. Okay. Mm-hmm. You see a 17% dip in Switch. You're like, okay, well, that. Honestly, bravo for Nintendo for th- that console has performed so incredibly well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, okay, it's, it's, you know, it's sunsetting that console. And then mm-hmm. when I see a 47% dip, it just makes me wonder because I'm like, you're right. Like the box itself is great. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a PlayStation fan through and through, but like, I'll, I'll admit it right here. The black Xbox Series X a prettier design well you know a, a way better design than the, than sure. the playstation 5 right both yeah. aesthetically and just deep down into the nuts and bolts of it series s is also very competent and so like i'm like wow they got the basic entry point to this console they got something that the the hardcore fans are going to really dig mm-hmm. um they do have or at least are starting to get the games right and i'm just like damn like it's and you know, you have game pass and so it, it to me it's like is it is it really what phil said back in that kind of funny thing which is just like the digital libraries are already have already been made i'm never switching to iphone like i mean and never and that's the thing i'm never switching to android so it's like yeah even even though like i know android has way better like you know for the most part, cameras and whatnot. I'm like, nah, I have my blue chat bubbles. I like this. Games um, I want to play on Apple Arcade that I'll never get on Android. I'm not giving up the, the library and the content I built. Yeah. And so, like, as a consumer, I'm looking at that going, yeah, there is a reason why I'm not playing my... Look, I real talk, I've not played my Xbox since the last time we played Halo, Luke. And that was at least two months ago. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, why shame. am I not... Well, because I'm not collecting trophies and, you know, that ecosystem is important to, excuse me, to me. So it's like, yeah, I, I guess there is a lot of truth there. And I think Microsoft's like change in, in their strategy is kind of exciting because like for me, it's like, oh, cool. I get to, you know, like, for example, our Patreon show that we do with the community, we're going to be talking about Hi-Fi Rush as the game of the month for yeah. PlayStation. It's like, that's pretty damn neat it, it seems like they're very much interested in building all sorts of ecosystems and not just you know one ecosystem where it's like yeah no like you can there there will be like a web that gets you to game pass but like mm-hmm. at the end of the day they're like no call of duty halo candy crush diablo b- making sure these communities you know have you know uh the content out there and and are thriving that's gonna be important to us so to me it's it's from what the outsider looking in so i'm very curious in what you guys have to say it's just like activision changed xbox not xbox changing activision and i think we're seeing that firsthand uh Hmm. because you know when you take a look at like luke it's something you pointed out uh a few weeks ago when you take a look at like the top selling Microsoft now owned games of last year, they're all multi platform games. Mm-hmm. So it's yep. like you got your Diablos, you got your Call of Duties. Mm-hmm. And then if you're, you are someone at the, you know, C suite level, you, 
you're like, why am I not doing this with my other games? Why right? is it just some? And, like, yeah. Cares? Yeah. Hey, I, I want I want to hear Ainge's thoughts on Halo specifically because I am very much of the mind that Halo Infinite is going to be on Switch too, like Halo Infinite multiplayer. I really think we see that happen sooner than later. Um, and that and Xbox and Halo are intrinsically tied, but Halo's got to be in more places. Halo Infinite's the best it's ever been, and it's so good now. But it's been four years, three years, like. Hey Ains, when you see all this Xbox news go multi-platform stuff, what about Halo? <laughs> like, are you okay? That going other places? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, Wait, I think what? Uh, you are you want being... other people? Yeah, yeah, I'm being serious. Oh, okay. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I none of this really bothers me in that sense. I, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of things I want to say, and you know me, so I'm trying to curate my thoughts. Um, first, before Just I do that, go in, dude. Just let go me in. shout out. Midnight Jury, one season Thanks. game membership, which went to Gamefire, who's always a regular here on the SG channel too, which is awesome. awesome. Jury, uh, literally gifts a membership every show we do. So thank you so much, Jury. That's so awesome. Big. Appreciate you. Um, yeah. So there, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, <laughs> there it is. We got so, one. Thirty-one minutes I'll, in. <laughs> I'll start with Halo to to your question. Um, no, I'm fine with it. Um, I think that. The reason I'm fine with it is it's very clear and, and, you know, obviously I'm one of the people at the forefront of that conversation is there's not a new Halo campaign or game coming anytime soon. Uh, it's going to be a while, guys. So um, Infinite, to your point, is a, you know, obviously I love Infinite's campaign, but it's not getting any campaign additions. And so it came out two and a half years ago. And all the new updates are obviously multiplayer. And it's a free to play multiplayer at that, which is why I garnered a much bigger audience on PC this time around. Right. Um, as with any free-to-play multiplayer suite in 2024, look at all of them, literally all of them. Um, they're free-to-play and they're cross-platform. It's this it's this point I try to make when you look at like Xbox Live's most played list and I say like, oh, Infinite's back up to like 15th. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like a lot, a lot more people play Infinite than I think people realize. Mm -hmm. And they're like 15th. If it was Halo 3, it would have been number two, you know? And it's like, it's so naive like they don't know what they're talking about because literally the top 10 are all cross-platform almost free-to-play shooters fortnite call of duty warzone um apex siege roblox minecraft it's the same games now, month in and month out and that not are just top that, 10. Well, when people say that shit it's like <sighs> yeah and remember in you know <laughs> you know what is it like 2000 when did halo 3 come out 2000 2007 2007 Seven. Right, Bake, Breaking Benjamin was still making hit music. So it's like, <laughs> let's like let's relax. It's almost on twenty nerd. years ago. Like it's, it's not even a comparison. Yeah. What were other games on that caliber of Halo? It was there. There was Call of Duty, but like that's about it. So it's like, yeah, the the industry, the market was so much smaller back then. It's not. Yeah, it's not even a and comparison. It's not even. It's not even a fair comparison in the slightest. Because you're right. Now it's like every everybody's looking to, at like. Fortnite and Roblox as these like games as platforms now. Yeah. And they're very accessible, right? You guys know mm -hmm. this. We talk about it. Like mm -hmm. Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, Apex, they're all very easy. Call of Duty, very easy to pick up and play. It's pick up, point, shoot, right? Mm -hmm. Halo's just not that game. It's never been that game. And the people like me don't want it to be that game. Um, Whereas because... I think it needs to be to survive. No, because we have <laughs> tons of point and shoot games. Right. I don't want another bland, anyone can win game. Like mm -hmm. Halo is that competitive game. Yeah. But I don't think Halo survives next to those other ones. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking, I well, think we're arguing two different points. I'm not saying, well, well it's better. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Survive. Yeah. No, I well, mean, it's, it's surviving. It's just people have to be okay with it not being on top. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I think most of the Halo community is okay with that, but you still get those people who are like, Halo should be number one. And I'm Make like, I Halo for you. Again. yeah, it's never yeah. going to be number one again. It yeah. never will be number one again. I don't care if you put it on every phone and switch and PS4 out there. It's not going to be number one. Every yeah. now and again, I see some dumb, dumb uh, internet yeah. user. I almost said some words, uh, say things like bring Bungie back. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Bungie's never been in a worse place. What are you talking <laughs> Bungie's about? Bungie's fa literally falling apart. Like, what um, are you talking about? Yeah, but it's... anyway. Yeah, go for it. Sorry, so that that that's my thought on Halo. But I think, you know, yesterday or the day before Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday because I have it up right here. Um, 
Polygon published an interview with Phil Spencer, right? That was from GDC. Mm -hmm. And I started writing a new article, which I'm about halfway through. I just need time um, around it because it kind of touches on some of the things that led up to the business update that we got two months ago. Was it now something like mm -hmm. that from Xbox? And there's uh, three month. points. In... It's only been a month. Jesus Christ. Know, right? All right. Time. Um, so there's three points that he calls out specifically, which they've already talked about and goes back to what you were saying, Luke, around how Xbox has in the console space. Xbox has been the one that has been most at the forefront of the changing ecosystem right mm -hmm. they're the ones who have driven the most technology change the ecosystem change the kind of cross compatibility all that and they needed to because technically in the console space they were third right so they were mm -hmm. trying to gain ground by adding these things while utilizing technology which obviously being microsoft they can mm -hmm. do faster easier than nintendo and sony can do mm -hmm. so the the three points he calls out are the cost of AAA games right mm -hmm. and he basically says where previous games needed to sell a few hundred thousand units to justify a cost, new games need to sell millions of units. And if you're a publisher, you know that's a huge number in a world that already has a lot of video games coming. So how do you establish that? Are you willing to take the risk on a new IP? How do you market it, right? Those are all huge concerns nowadays that weren't as large previously. The other is that exclusives are cost prohibitive and they only reach so many players. Mm -hmm. So again, you're circling, you're just doubling down on his first point, which is, now you've spent all this money to make something that's going to has a limited audience to begin with right out of the gate. And then number three is that the console market's not growing. And someone else said this in the chat, but not only Xbox, right? And you see the percentages of console sales, as you guys were saying, but the, the pie's not growing overall, not for PlayStation right. and Nintendo either. And so he points out to Polygon, he his literal quote says, you're not finding new customers with the games that you're building. Everybody's kind of fighting over the same size pie. And mm -hmm. so you're just regurgitating the same customers because you're not pulling anyone new in. And the data shows, like he mentioned somewhere else, or maybe it's in this interview, Gen Z, the, co the console is not the thing. The, you know, it's, it's not what they grew up understanding or knowing. Mm -hmm. um, and so anyway, I think all of those points go in to say, this is why Xbox, especially we've talked about this, after investing over $80 billion, right? Microsoft and Xbox, he says in there, we're a business they have to recoup money right and they're going to have to expand that profitability and they're going to do that however they think is best to do it and it's going to be very different from the console ecosystem that we have known for decades mm -hmm. i'll stop and, now no i, I wish Stadia had been real and it and they truly done it right i don't mean did i cut you off joe i'm sorry i didn't mean to no I you just, did but you're making yep. a good point i think you're like i think you're on the verge go for it okay if it's not i criticize you i think Stadia no had the right idea and had they done it right the i because i'm i'm surrounded by young people all the time right we right. took a, took a 30 minute window last week after testing and we all jumped on x cloud and played fortnite like 10 laptops said in i the was room. at diddy's mansion i just wanted to mention i just want to say that oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> we all young, young people all the time i just want to just let oh, that be geez. known but we all jumped on and played fortnite on our chromebooks we just jumped on and played together for a few minutes and enjoyed gaming. That sounds really gross. Yeah. I don't like this. Kidding. I don't like I'm this. Kidding. But but <laughs> none of them were concerned with Xbox, PlayStation, Switch. None of them cared. Which then is why I but. think like the what, what Xbox is talking about, he's like, Yeah, I would like to have more storefronts on our box. Mm -hmm. And he you know talked about like was it itch.io and uh Epic uh, Epic, Epic and like Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Come on, Steam. Yeah, you want to open that, the that ecosystem, is a dig right? At, yeah, that is a dig at Steam all day. Open that ecosystem yeah. up, and then all of a sudden, who knows what what you're able to bring out of that partnership. Games that would never be on console are now mm -hmm. on that console. And now, all of a sudden, someone who you know plays a game on a, on a Chromebook who wants a little bit more power, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more sustainability mm -hmm. on, on, that, on that end, goes... Oh, you know what? There's an easy. I don't have to make the, you know, thousand dollar computer. I don't have to play on this small iPad. I could play on my TV, and mm -hmm. I could buy this two hundred dollar box to do it. It's like that's actually that's the way you do it. That's how you open the ecosystem up. So you're right. If Stadia was uh, possible, right. if the idea came to fruition, it would be perfect. Mm -hmm. 
because you have that drop in drop out between your android phone your android tablet your uh, your whatever the google chrome thing is um you know that connects into the tv your chromebook mm-hmm. all of it into one app and now what we're seeing microsoft do chromecast yeah. thank you is kind of make a frankenstein's monster out of that going okay we're going to try to what we are going to do what what you know google chrome is doing but we have to stitch these things together over time and that's exactly what xbox they've been working on that for years they, exactly. and they've they've been very clear about it that's that's what i think always kind of drives me a little bonkers in these conversations not with you guys but in general is that every time they talk about this stuff we get the community acting like it's some big change or something new and it's like are, do you even listen to the words that come out of this company's mouth like they Phil has been talking in this direction for years, yeah, literal years. Um, and he he made it a point like three years ago that no, the box is not going away, but we are exploring and expanding on how you uh, interact with Xbox as an ecosystem. We have talked about this ad nauseum, and I I always get confused when people are like, "Oh my God, they're not investing in the box as much anymore." It's like because they hit what like they they're surprised, right? Yeah, it's and, like go for it. Well, it's, uh, Warzone Mobile just came out what two weeks ago, a week ago, a week ago. I've been playing Warzone Mobile nonstop every day since it came out on my phone. My progress carries over into my console space and expands my battle pass. I'm still playing with mobile users, but like there's an integration there that suddenly I'm in an ecosystem that's traversing multiple SKUs and platforms and I'm having a blast and I'm spending money in there and spending time in there when I could spend time and money in other places. Yeah, that's the you know what's funny? What's that? Think of how many years ago was it now? It's probably maybe six. I don't remember what year it is, but you remember when Xbox and PlayStation were arguing about putting crossplay in Minecraft, and PlayStation yeah. was like, We don't want to do that. And yes. Xbox is like, We want to do that. And I'm like, Think of how far we've come mm-hmm. since that debate. You know what I mean? How children. much the, the industry has changed in yeah. just a few years since that mm-hmm. blew up. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's it just goes to show how fast we're we're going. That's why when 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 I heard because in the beginning I was like the, the first the first time I heard the news I'm like that's weird. Why you, you have you're making all this money pure profit on your end, right? Like that thirty percent you're charging on your store. Then it just if you just take a second, take a step back, going yeah, why would they do this? And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden go oh you open yourself to more customers that could also buy your hardware buy your controller get accustomed to it so yeah. yeah no i i you know and then you start taking cuts of the other games they buy on your platform and then you sell more accessories it's just a domino effect right yeah. and so. then you know you know you saw the playstation fans clap and giggle with glee and listen a part of me i'm i'm, I'm giggling with glee because i get to play sea of thieves on playstation it's awesome for me but mm-hmm. then like a few days later they're like and hey, we're gonna have to cut like 10% of this workforce and uh, we're going to have to reevaluate how we make games again because this mm-hmm. is not sustainable yeah. and they're talking about the same thing and I'm just mm-hmm. like guys we're at this moment in games where and we're truly we're I, I think we're here we're like you know five years ago yeah like the Sony style game was it but now you're seeing these independent studios look the Larian booth I spent God knows how, ma- how much money <laughs> at what a speech by the way Oh go my ahead. God. Go ahead. Yeah, no. I mean, and, and they've been at the forefront of talking about like how this chase of like infinite growth is just unsustainable and you know the, the reliance of, of these these suits that just all of it need to go. But like you're now seeing developers independent, you know, fighting their way out of you know the uh, um partnerships like Relic with Sega. Right, uh, you see Borderlands being or the the Borderlands devs being traded off to two K, yeah, Gearbox. Um, <clears throat> you know, you're seeing developers going, no, we're gonna we're gonna focus on us. It's about our independence. It's not about this, you know, little point on the board that goes up. And those are the games that are really ch- going to change the way, and they have been of how we you know, play games and how we think about games, what we think our game of the year is going to be. All that is going to be not from PlayStation, not from Xbox, not from whoever. It's going to be from your Larians. It's going to be from studios you've never heard of before or or finally breaking out into the to the mainstream. Like seeing Baldur's Gate, a, you know, what is it? A ARPG. N- no, not ARPG, is it? 
Top down. That's Diablo. I'm sick. Just give me a just give me whatever a it is. CRPG. Um, yeah. you know, seeing that game heavily inspired by D and D, unapologetically so, mm-hmm. being you know 15 million units sold. Then Larian going there, seeing that success, going, and we're not going to make a sequel. <laughs> we're mm-hmm. going to do something new. It's like that's what we should be championing. Companies that are are taking risks not taking the safe bets, not taking the safe sequels, carving mm. their own path. That's the thing that gets me super excited about video games. It's the people that like, you know, from the path of the exile devs going, Hey, listen, you know, they won't let us make a Diablo. So we're going to do it ourselves and we're going to mm. do it our way. And like path of the exile too, is one of my favorite games played at PAX this year. It's fantastic. So like, you know, seeing devs, make those chances and the environment that we're about to enter is different from the Sony dominated story driven games. Not to say those aren't going to happen. Judas looks amazing, but like you're going to see more risk taking than ever. And these platforms becoming less and less important as time goes on. That's well said, Joe. Thanks. And, yeah. Did you see the Larian I'm on Sudafed right now. <laughs> You're crushing it. <laughs> did, did you guys see the Larian Studio Head speech about retaining workforce and not laying people off? No, I have not. Um, Joe, can you pull that up while I paraphrase that? Oh, yeah, sure. Go for it. I appreciate you. In short, Ains, what he was saying is, to, to kind of re- recap part of what Joe was saying, like we started to make DLC in an expansion for Baldur's Gate 3, but our heart wasn't in it. Mm-hmm. We're going to go another direction. Also, and he kind of called out the industry trend of wanting the most profits, hiring up big time, hit not hitting or hitting a margin, and then firing a whole bunch of people, but then thinking, okay, what's the next next thing? And having to go on a rehiring spree yep. instead of retaining their workforce and all the knowledge that they have built up over yep. time and putting them into effect. And it's I got literally the here. Uh, if yeah, you want it, me to read it. Uh, go ahead. So, and this is a little font, and I'm dyslexic, so please bear with me. Uh, uh-huh. Greed has been fucking this whole thing up for so long since I started, Vinick said, uh, while collecting the GDCA Best Narrative Award for Baldur's Gate 3. Quote, I've been fighting publishers my entire life, and I keep seeing the same, same, same mistakes over and over. It always it's always the quarterly profits he continued. The only thing that matters are numbers. And uh and then you fire everybody the next year and say, uh shit, I'm out of developers. And then you start hiring people again. And then you you do acquisitions. And then you put the same loop again and it's just broken. You don't have to, Vinick went on. You can make reserves. You can just slow down a bit. Slow down the on the greed. Be resilient. Take care of the people. Don't lose institutional knowledge that's been built up in people that you lose every single time so that you have to go through the same cycle over and over. It really pisses me off. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so Beautiful. Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny because um, based on what, uh luke kind of paraphrased there at the beginning um so I, we've talked about it endlessly on this show i work in big corporation uh, i work in application development and um i literally was talking to one of my uh directs yesterday about this because we uh i can't name companies but we currently use three companies for external development um, we've been instructed that we have to narrow that down to the one company now, which means letting go of people that have been with us for several years in some cases as uh, external contractors, well paid contractors, but contractors nonetheless. Um, and what that means, of course, is we have a whole bunch of services and all sorts of things that are built that the people who have the knowledge on that stuff now will be gone. Mm-hmm. And so what you're going to do, you're going to bring new people in. They're not going to understand it. It takes a very long ramp up, sometimes years to understand the depth of code and, you know, depending on the systems and other things you work on and the integrations that take place. And then you, on a spreadsheet, and I create some of these spreadsheets so I can tell you for a fact, um, it looks like you're going to save money. You cut the resources here, you hire here, you move people here, you're going to save a couple million over a few years. Okay, go ahead and do it. 
Um, it's it's just the way it's done. And what's never factored or rarely factored, I should say, into those conversations is all of the ancillary and downstream impacts that have a significant cost but aren't quantified, mm -hmm. right? And so that's exactly what the Larian head, uh, I didn't catch his name. Uh, Venick. Venick, Venick, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what he's referring to, and I think he's right. And we, we kind of touched on this um, several shows ago, which was probably six months ago, I don't know, whenever the <laughs> show was, where we were talking about Xbox cutting. It's when we had the layoff conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And basically what I was saying is what you're seeing in the gaming industry, again, just my opinion, is that as the gaming industry has now become a $300 billion global industry and you're seeing the uh, capitalistic side of it come out with the major corporations acquiring companies and coming in and we've seen what's happened with Embracer, right? It's all about the bottom line. They don't give a shit, right? Mm -hmm. They don't give a shit about the people. Um, and what they miss in that in only looking at the bottom line is exactly what he stressed is that if you just took a step back lowered your greed level a little bit, you would realize that you can still be profitable while simultaneously keeping people happy and making fantastic games. Mm -hmm. um, instead, you do this runaround to try and maximize profits, and it just becomes a disaster. Part of what we know hurt the development of Halo Infinite, mm -hmm. um, Forza Motorsport, Sands some of the, of the major Central. Xbox games, right, is the 18-month contractor term limit at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. It's a mandate across the company. And I have talked to people at 343 directly about their time there and how they had to be cut. It could not be extended. And so the, you spend 12 months learning the systems in play and how to code on them. You get a few months of actual real work done, and then you're gone. And then someone new comes in. And guess what they have to do? They have to relearn everything that was just lost. And it's a vicious cycle that loses you time, costs you extra money, even though it looks on paper like it's cheaper because you're just hiring these contractors for a limited time where you don't have to offer them healthcare benefits or full-time salaries, what mm -hmm. we would call a fully loaded cost of an employee. Right. Yeah. So Can it's I, just, okay. it's, it's maddening to watch unfold because this is, <laughs> I deal with this crap at work. I don't like seeing it affect my, the thing okay. that brings me joy. You know what I mean? It drives me nuts. The, uh, if you'll forgive me for being a touch cerebral on this, I want to connect this whole idea to other things. I am now at 14 years in a master teacher. I know my content backwards and forwards. I understand the intricacies, how to take students through a level of knowledge and learning far beyond that, that I could ever have done 10 years ago. How to take I, field trips to islands. Right? <laughs> You're right. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, I could never have had that could never be as good as I am if I had not stayed in the field. And I'm surrounded by younger and older teachers with more uh, and with uh, less experience that have master's degrees, even doctorates. And they're idiots. They have no idea what they're doing. Their <laughs> master's degree is nothing but something purchased. And it, yeah. it comes from lack of experience, the intrinsic knowledge built up in a profession. In my profession, we exit 100%. teachers too quickly. I saw the same thing in martial arts. People go to belt factories, get their black belt in two years, can't throw a punch, can't throw a kick, get their <laughs> ass kicked in any fight whatsoever, don't know how to train. And it's it's very frustrating because quality and depth and knowledge takes time. Yep. And companies do not want to earn that with time. And customers aren't shouldn't be expected to earn that time either. We should be able to purchase the product and enjoy it. The company should have the wherewithal to recognize that and it's very frustrating is yeah. that too, i don't know if that's too uh, no I, no i think it goes into no no topic. it's the same issue in different industries yeah like like I, with, like yeah. there's there's a lot of turnover where where i work right where we're, we're like dealing with folks with disabilities with autism uh that has have you know greater need than others um <laughs> Yeah, you're self-diagnosed. You self <laughs> sit back down. Okay. We at least he was paying attention wife. when you said that, not staring yeah, at a Power cut, Ranger or something. Cutting a fuzzy wall or whatever. Um, <laughs> but like <laughs> where I work, you see it's heavy turnover. Where like there's a few of us that truly understand what, you know, could accidentally rile up uh, a client or not. And, you know, there's a lot of us that like do double duty because, yeah, yeah, listen, this person, this person literally needs me 
there with them because the other person legitimately has no idea what they're doing mm -hmm. and it, it's frustrating it's super frustrating uh and then everything falls back down on you at the end of the day but like it, it, it it's it's really translated across the board of what we've been going through in the past i don't know 10 15 plus years it seems so that being said looking at what trying to to, to to take this doom and gloom and put it somewhere positive <laughs> seeing you know games like sea of thieves get a second uh not chance at life but a breath of it mm -hmm. um by going into a bigger platform awesome you know see any any one of those games i think listen i'm a playstation guy i got it blah 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 but like any one of those games developers generally do not care what you're playing it on it they they want you to play on everything mm -hmm. right like they want their game to be on everything so you could play on it uh, they want their game to be played. So, like, to me, it's like, yeah, put Gears on there, put Halo. Who who gives a crap? I just want to play a game. It doesn't really matter the game pad or lack thereof that I have. Look at xCloud. You're now doing keyboard and mouse stuff. Finally. Like, finally, right? So, like, there are they're making gradual steps where it's just like, it's just about you being tangentially tied to this ecosystem whether you're self-aware of it or not and you know it's going to be really interesting where playstation and nintendo go from here because like you know looking at sony it's like okay cool you won the gold console war Woo, confetti you know here's a jim ryan cookie <laughs> and now they're well, like put it on pc a jim ryan bobblehead <laughs> put a yeah put a jim bobblehead on your desk i don't know but like Okay, now what? Because now the like you you're not making have, any money. Your exactly. ROIs are super low. Super low. So now you have to trim that, right? Mm -hmm. So like, and then you're you're taking a look at people who, yeah, the Gen Z audience who do not give a crap about the emblem on the piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. They're just playing it on wherever. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how can I even entice those people because they won't even look up from their screens? And like Nintendo, I mean, I think they got some leeway because I think people generally think Nintendo is. If you're a parent, oh, this would be good for my kid. Yeah. But even then, it's like... It's like Disney. Nintendo's a very unique uh, case. Yeah, they're very unique, but you're seeing more companies go, hey, what work for the Switch can work for us. Why not we make a Steam Deck? Why not we make a Logitech, whatever it's called, right? Like, why don't we make a, you know, a, a, you know, a PlayStation Portal? All if those things. If that Xbox handheld's real, it better be dockable. <laughs> um, like it needs uh, to be. That Switch yeah. formula is the future. My students, especially uh, you play Fortnite, you play Warzone, you play Minecraft, you play Roblox. They're not saying, do you play PlayStation? Do you play Xbox? Do you play Switch? It doesn't matter. They don't care. Why care? Goes back to the point I made earlier. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. It does hurt though. I will say, like, it does kind of suck when I'm. Why do I have an Xbox? Why do I care? about xbox there is that that's the old hat in us on some level the the sega versus nintendo brand like, loyalty yeah. right yeah i really i just want to play more gears and halo really i just want to enjoy cod really i just want to play the game I, I love and i think that ties into why the pc market is growing right because pc is non it's non-branded mm -hmm. you do whatever pc you want you know what i mean it's an open mm -hmm. platform and then you just play the games you want to play um whereas you don't have to own a specific closed wall you know box Mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know i it, it's really interesting i like i write in my <laughs> latest I, I like writing about xbox because one they're always changing something um mm -hmm. uh, and two they're more communicative like we know what their vision is because they talk about it all the time nintendo mm -hmm. doesn't say a damn thing um and playstation's not far behind um so it's just it's easier to talk about xbox in this space because the, you know they're pretty open because the media is out to get them ains <laughs> well, I think that I think that's the double-edged sword, right? Like, there's mm -hmm. people like us who appreciate it and take that and kind of analyze it, like we're doing and stuff like that in a in a mature fashion. But as soon, you know, you know how the social media is, right? There's a lot of people out there that'll look for any little point that doesn't fit with their narrative or that they don't like, and then they'll drill down on that. And so, because Phil speaks so often, and so does Sarah and Matt to a degree, right? They just there's plenty of ammunition for them in that space to say, look, Xbox is doing X, Y, and Z. That's mm -hmm. bad um, because you know the, the, they obviously run Fortune which, twenty companies, you know. Which mm -hmm. like I I think even the last month you've seen them be a lot less communicative, um, 
And I think they're starting to learn, hey, maybe we don't talk, don't talk as about. much uh, because someone's going to just get a clip of it. That's why I think it's really smart that they did a GDC interview with Polygon because they know half these fucking idiots can't read. So I think that's really <laughs> <laughs> well, very. Uh, th- th- I want to also- shout out. Uh, sorry, just wanted to shout out the chat too. We've got a one H one D joiner, Jam Pack Sam's in the house. Level one gaming's here. What's up, guys? These are there you go. those are a lot of my Discord people. What up? It makes me really happy. That was yeah, really we cool. all talk shit about you when you walk off. Damn. Um, yeah. Can, can I? I'm oh, sorry, for it, Luke. No, you well, go for it. The Polygon interview. This is an inter- this is an interesting bit because. Because as I talked about trying to reach more people with XEP and change, just grow XEP, which has been difficult, right? All I do is try to reach out for interviews, get rejected ten out of every, nine out of every ten times, which makes sense, right? Of course, you're going to cater to the bigger audiences, but I think Xbox specifically had a problem when they were too communicative to so many of their content creators. One hundred percent, yes. That are absolute morons or fools or absolutely not the people they should. They didn't vet them properly. Colt Eastwood going after this guy's dead wife the other day. Whoa. Wild. Wild. And suddenly this is a person that was once dialoguing with leadership because it's that easy on a platform. That's the danger. And it does stink because the benefit of social media is you get to connect and communicate and be with these people. The downside is, one misstep and you've got an entire controversy in your hands all the way looping back to what we talked about at the very beginning of the show. And that does stink. That really yeah. does stink. But PlayStation's not having that problem. Nintendo's not having that problem. They don't talk to me one slight don't. bit. Yeah. They don't talk to anybody. <laughs> and it's a very odd thing to exist in this nebulous space because I do think gaming journalism is dying. Yeah. I really do. It I, is. Content- I can tell you for a fact. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it just truly is the content creators real are, are I yes and the content creators are, are suffering as well if they're not going for click and engagement right just making content and so it's really this strange space because everywhere all the time where our attention's being fought for there's no downtime there's no downtime it used to be you turn your TV off and suddenly the world can't touch you turn your radio off the world can't touch you now this screen, that screen, everything pinging for your attention. Yeah. And uh, and it's not healthy. Uh, well, I think, um, like- yeah, I think part of the problem, and, and you know, I'm going to shout out Travis because this is what Travis talks about sometimes, which a lot of people get upset about. But I think, you know, there's always, it's a, the, the fact lives in the gray, right? It's not in the black or the white. And I wish mm-hmm. more people would realize there's always kind of the yeah. middle ground of where things really are happening. But what he points out is like the reason that he speaks out pretty avidly against content creators being the source of truth in terms of journalism Mm -hmm. is that there is no barrier of entry anyone Mm -hmm. you can go buy a ten dollar mic start a youtube account and just start yelling into the ether uh without any knowledge whatsoever of anything to do with business development anything coding you know anything to do with gaming and we see that all the time i mean i could (laughs) i'm not going to name names but i could point to 20 people that you guys would know name of right now that i know what they do in real life and i promise you they have zero understanding of what's actually going on yeah. yet they have popular shows you yeah. know what i mean because people just like hearing an echo chamber yeah. um but what travis points out is that at least at a bare minimum like he obviously writes for ign there's other major sites too i think there's some big sites like kotaku we pick on all the time who really have gone down the drain right over years um but at least at a bare minimum when you used to have to write for a major publication or a site or something like that. There are at least a bare minimum of guardrails to be able to do that, right? Mm-hmm. You have to show a, a minimum competency level of understanding mm-hmm. of how to write, how to present uh, an argument versus a fact or an opinion, mm-hmm. those types of things. Whereas people just screaming into the ether with no understanding of any of that is foundational. Um, it's a problem. Goodness. And so the people who are like, You know, you see this in social media where it's like, oh, IGN or whatever site, pick all the major sites. They all suck. I just get everything from content creators. And it's like, well, it depends who you listen to as with anything else. But just everything being content creators is not the solution. I can promise you that. Right. How much time do we have to pay attention every day, all the day? I don't sometimes. So I enter into an episode sometimes less informed than I would on a different week. 
just because. And where am I getting my information from? Socials, content creators, journalists. I, I say it a lot on the trophy. But it's like, you should not take my word as gospel. Like, you know, we, we make a very conscious effort of just like, it's the reason why we read the articles on the show for you guys are like the majority of them um, is because we want you to walk in with the same information that we're walking into. So, you know, I'm not pulling it out of my ass. I'm not paraphrasing it. I'm getting it verbatim so we can have a conversation in the bounds that is this article. Um, and that's important. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I am the de facto voice of PlayStation. That would be a bald face lie, but you see a lot of folks go well listen here folks i bought a og xbox and that means i'm part of the club i understand you and it's <laughs> no, like that, that is not that is not that's not it like you could be a i could be a like listen i'm a fan of the mets i don't know how baseball has changed you know what i mean so like it you could be a fan of something and be completely you know blind to the facts around mm-hmm. you and in mm-hmm. the higher level things i think and there's nothing wrong with that, to be there's clear, right? That. No. But like that's that's what makes be... fan bases, but you have to recognize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Khalif said something, uh, Khalif Adams, which is like, he's one of my favorite voices in this goddamn space. He said something along the lines of like, understand, like, we're all, when we're making content and we're talking about the future of this X, Y, and Z, it's like, we're all guessing. And sometimes we we get our our, our guesses are, are right because we start learning a little bit of how this industry works and runs. Sometimes it's out of straight luck, but like you know, we get our following because we're not just shooting from the hip. We are mm-hmm. we are trying to go about it in a thoughtful manner, and that attracts the minds that are going to tell you how things actually run and work and what happens behind the scenes of how a video game gets marketed or made or whatever the the case may be. And then you start gaining that not so much secondhand institutional Mm -hmm. knowledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's when you start becoming an actual viable voice in this industry. But we see too many of like, I'll just call them out, Colt Eastwoods of the world, just go like, hey, listen, I'm really good at editing. I'm really good at Premiere and I can edit anyone's dead wife into a meme it's like those like that type of creator is just it's just not it's just not healthy uh we're turning ourselves into these weird like cult like figures that is just you know speaking to at the end of the day nine people because all this console warring has a has a limit and it is a scary thing that we're walking into where you're right a lot of folks from like ign GameSpot, Polygon, journalists are going into the PR space. They're going into the development space. Mm-hmm. They're going into, you know, your Xbox wires, your PlayStation blog posts. Mm-hmm. And we're going to start getting our information straight from the PlayStation mouthpiece and mm-hmm. not someone who has or isn't getting paid by your Xbox or PlayStation. The fear that everybody has, IGN's just paid off by playstation or whatever is actually going to come to to reality sooner than you think where you're getting your information straight from the playstation blog i've I've found my i cut you off again i keep doing it i'm sorry go for it i I found myself um choosing to financially support steven totillo's game file yes just because there's investigative journalism there's interviews he's writing but he's still one guy and then uh shout out to the game informer team they're launching their magazine. Oh like, yes. That's so awesome. I'm so excited, dude. I shared it. I subscribed for two years right away. I'm like, let's go. I let's- was talking to I was talking to Alex the night before they, they announced that. And he's just like, like, real talk, guys, please support this because this is them saying Can like a, a big middle Put finger up to the GameStop folks. Yeah, I got like, it. I got it. Yeah. Sure. Going like, no, this could be something people want. Like, this is what people want. And we're not going to be tied to some dumb card. This is this is us. Go support that team. That team is like two dozen tops. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they yeah, they are a small the- team. They had layoffs last year. Yeah. Like it's literally less than like 20 people. Like I think maybe 21. So like support that team because for the size of what they do, like I, I made that a quick note when I, when I met him at PAX, it's like, or sorry, I saw him again at PAX. It's just like what, what you guys do pound for pound is some of the best yep. games coverage. Love um, game subscribing right now. 
yeah, it's it's awesome. It's literally only twenty bucks a year, and then you go over to patreon.com slash ps trophy and we give us a buck. You know? <laughs> it's thirty five bucks for two years, which is nuts. Yeah, that's super cheap. I went to buy my favorite magazine is still uh, modern gaming magazine is Edge from the UK. Yeah, you um, love used the to Edge. Be next. <laughs> used to be <laughs> used to be next generation years ago but i actually went to barnes and noble my wife was picking up a book and it's the first time i've been in months and that's the only place you can really find it here you know because it's imported and it used to be 12 dollars. and i went to look if they still carried it they had the issue they had was from three months ago and they're now 17 dollars each for one issue and i'm like the fact that you can get game informer for two years for 35 bucks is an absolute steel steel absolute steel like think about like what we you know i don't have patreon anymore but what you guys do with patreon what we do with memberships or anyone else you support in the gaming space you're usually spending like three five ten bucks a month you know what i mean these guys are talking mm -hmm. about 35 bucks for two years of actual hard copy magazines delivered to your house hey, like, but for hey, don't like patreon month, I, re exactly. I really need it okay well, i know but you know the point i'm making it's very expensive for seven bucks a month you get shout outs you get uh, <laughs> hundreds of hours of bonus content we, we you know what i mean i'm you in trouble I, mean. I gotta switch to stream yard i need uh, these dollars uh, I just <laughs> okay uh, oh my but, god like that's what we're gonna see i think i think that's also journalism <laughs> across the board is gonna evolve into Substack. like i follow dan rather's Substack religiously I love Dan Rather. And like, he's yeah, still Steve Turtle. Yeah, dude. And he's, dude, he's still spitting some facts. And I, Dan Rather's the boy. Um, and like, like, and like, that's literally how I got the news. It's like, I don't want to go on CNN and get depressed. You know, I guess go. Oh, I Dan Rather is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just thought he was dead. Him. He's 92. And he's, he's not still right now. Dude, he's, he's still sharp, right man. man. He's, dude, yeah. he's still yeah. sharp. He's sharper than he all of us combined. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Anyway, uh, but like it's it's like the Steve Tortillos, you know, it's it's it is your Jason Schreier's, <laughs> no matter how much he blocks you. Um, you know, they <laughs> put out the actual investigative journalism that people actually listen to create waves. And yeah, like we're we're stepping in a really weird space right now or entering it where it's like we are making this weird transition towards the YouTuber the podcaster and even as a podcaster i'm like i don't think that's great at all i you know i saw someone over at vgc kind of go like yeah like you know everybody yells at us but at the end of the day if we're gone who are you gonna rip our you know the news from it's like mm -hmm. and, and claim it as your own original source your own original i don't topic. know but vgc did that to me and i'm still mad about it i mean so. that's fair I, it happened to me plenty <laughs> of times too like yeah that's true when i do the it's interviews true. i get it yeah, yeah. yeah. i ended it too yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's uh i did subscribe to game informer by the way hell yeah listening. there's my support to them let's um, uh let's ask a couple questions here so yeah. uh where's Jan? rob frawley uh, i think he had one um i think this one yep sam had one too yep, yep gotcha okay so this one comes from rob frawley the second amazing supporter of all three of us yep um yep love rob says, have you guys watched Judas coverage? What do you think about the narrative Lego ideas and procedurally generated map areas while apparently maintaining a handcrafted feel? I can't speak to this. What about you guys? I spent 10 minutes talking about this on the trophy this week. Oh, I'm nice. so excited. I'm so I, excited. I sadly have not had time. I was going to listen to it while working yesterday, and I got pulled on to just too much stuff, and I couldn't. It, so I, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to click on the Jeff thing because it's only like less than 10 minutes of Jeff talking. And I'm like, oh, fine. <laughs> All right. Because like the other one, the other like IGN coverage is like an hour long interview of Ken Levine. It's really great. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, and what Jeff said had me so intrigued that I literally listened to that one hour interview. And then I started listening to the Friends Per Second podcast. I had coverage on it. It sounds ingenious. Like the elevator pitch, if there is one, is essentially, you know, when you play a single player game, you beat it and you're done with it. Mm hmm. What if you just could keep playing it and the story changes uh, in the world around you and the characters changes through every interaction that you have with them? That's all I wanted for Arkham Knight. No. It was just more. Yeah. But that that question has been asked for a long time, though. So, for example, uh, I think again, we all say yes is my point. The problem yeah. is, how do you actually code that in reality? And I think that's what's been taking them 10 years. Because, like, there's, like, there's pretty much f three f uh, factions, and it has, like, roguelite elements to it. 
Uh, so like Judas is supposed to die and come back and you're supposed to get your memory back or whatever have you, but you're also building trusts and alliances and breaking set alliances with three major characters in the game. And what will happen is you're going through a level and you know, you're attacking, I think hope is one of the characters names uh, and you're going and you're helping one of the characters, Tom. So you're going through this hope level and hope will be like, okay, well, well, how about if you stop attacking me, you start attacking Tom, I will give you a gun. Or maybe you start attacking Tom and Tom's like, whoa, I thought we were buds. And then all of a sudden he's locking a door that was once accessible. And now it's not. Maybe he's shutting off all the healing in that one level for you. Maybe he's adding more bots to a room that wouldn't normally be there. Uh, things like that that Ken's doing is playing with the roguelite elements that we know in terms of like gameplay and mm -hmm. adding that into the story where it's not about beating the same level over and over to get more story. Mm -hmm. You're changing the story and you're changing the level as you progress. Okay. I think I said it right. It, it sounds, sounds a little cool. word soup, but it like, sounds great in concept. Obviously, execution is always the key. I think that um this is one of the spaces that I get excited about in AI. Um, I, I did a very high level uh, video commentary on this last year around where AI can take us in games. Um, and, and I'm fortunate enough right now to be working with some uh, generative AI stuff. And I think that where I see the link there and the excitement is what we've always wanted, which is kind of what you're describing, Joe, which is like the ability for the game to continually evolve, right? But the requirement in terms of actual development time and coding greatly reduced because that's the only way it's going to happen, right? Because otherwise you're talking about traditional DLC and expansions and things like that. But if you can develop systems that basically allow your game to react independently of one another, meaning your experience can be different from mine, et cetera, right? Long term, that can be yeah. truly, truly engaging because then at that point, not only can you continue playing a game, but when you play it a second time, it can be different and truly different. Not like you're selecting from option A or option B, right? right? It can actually react to what you do in real time in, in various ways. So, yeah, I get hugely excited about that because that would be like a, a true revolutionary step for gaming versus mm -hmm. the evolutionary steps we traditionally see. Yeah. And just I that interview alone, I was just like, I, I can't from i'm really excited for judas because i generally bioshock's one of my favorite games of all time me too um to man i love this man i can't wait for <laughs> judas this is my most anticipated game right now like i normally don't get this excited over just hearing a concept of a video game but hearing i'm like i am either going to be so greatly disappointed or i'm going to be overwhelmed when i actually play this game um yeah no it has me so much so that i, I bought the bioshock collection and i'm going back to infinite mm. Nice. Love it. nice. So I haven't played Infinite since uh you know first release. I did go back and start playing Bioshock One again like last year. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm hugely excited. Have they mentioned I don't think they did previously, but in this new coverage, have they mentioned any targeted release window? Uh they're still thinking 2025. Next year. They're still okay. thinking so 20. Six. Yeah. Yeah. They played four to five yeah. hours of it. Uh, and yeah, probably a year. I don't know. Because like it would be crazy if next year we get GTA 6, we get Judas, just like how we got Bioshock Infinite and GTA 5. <laughs> you know, like... It, we will, but it'll be 2026. Yeah. yeah it'll be yeah. GTA 5 is not coming next year. You don't think oh, so? No. 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 I'd put money on it. Okay. Yeah. Nah. We got another question. I saw what yes, Sam had a few. Let's get to Sam's question. Yes. Yeah. Do you think the celeb celebra celebritization of execs is going to do harm in the long run? Yes. Both thinking about people referring to Phil like they know him and Jim Ryan getting a commemorative, commemorative bobblehead. 100%. Because I... I love it. <laughs> who, who wants a Jim Ryan bobblehead? That was his fucking idea. We know it. <laughs> oh my God. Does it talk and say, I love cats? I, I don't know. I hope. I, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm Luke. I just the picture, got me. picture yeah. got me. Picture Everyone's gonna get it. Everyone's gonna. We bought an Xbox fridge, y'all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I do think it's a problem, uh, and it kind of speaks to what we were talking about earlier of communicative communicative issues. We do miss Reggie. We do miss Sean Layden. Phil is genuinely a great dude. 
And people, because he's a good dude, forget that he's also a businessman leading a billion trillion dollar industry. Uh, that it means he's going to make choices you don't like. Um, and companies are not our friends. So when you celebritize companies or people in charge of companies, you do have a problem. But that's quite literally why tons of companies outside of gaming hire celebrities for their voices. That's why Call of Duty had all those rappers uh, like Eminem and Snoop and somebody else promoting Call of Duty. That's why you see people celebritize stuff so they can distance themselves from the business part. Gaming is eclectically strange on this one. They collect yep. them, the most strange voices to go with it. We talked about it on the Trophy Room this week, Jim. You're going to really like it. Um, where you know, someone's like, rank all the executives. And I'm like, like motherfucker i was like 12 <laughs> in the codera run like i don't <laughs> i don't know these people it really wasn't until it, it wasn't until i think the end of the 360 slash ps3 generation maybe midway through that cycle where we really started to know these guys names like i think like the kevin butlers of the world really kind of kicked this off of just like yeah like you know shuhei yoshida because of that one greg miller interview on ign right like you know phil spencer because of you know he begrudgingly was on that xbox one stage but like he admitted yeah i own a playstation <laughs> 4 and a nintendo what is this all about and like we know them through their personalities through these interviews and again it goes back to those so you know the the parasocial relationships that we build with not just each other online, but these suits. I, you know, a lot of Xbox podcasts love me until I say, and these companies aren't your friend. Phil Spencer doesn't know you. He's not your buddy just because he's on your friends list. Um, Get out of here. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it, it's there. It is a problem. And I think that will start to change relatively soon. Companies are not your friends. These board members are not your friends. Shuhei doesn't know me. I don't know Shu. I bet he's a nice guy, but at the end of the day, he's trying Shu to get money. He's for amazing. Me. He's one of the I people I want to meet. He looks I awesome. Bet, I, I bet he could just fit in my pocket. You know, you know who <laughs> you know what's you know who does need to make a comeback? What's that? This might be a deep cut, so you may not get it. But stick with me. Marcus, PSP. Yes. You remember Marcus? I, remember I don't Marcus. remember that. Oh, oh my dude. god. He's it a little kid like... from uh was it, what was it? Was it grown ups? I don't know what yeah. he was from, but he just loved PSP. And so, like, on all the PSP commercials, the very end, he'd be like, Marcus, <laughs> PSP. And that I don't was remember it. that. <laughs> it was just this cool. <laughs> Role models. That was the movie I think he was in. Was it the same kid? Yeah, I think it's the same kid, yeah. Uh, either oh, way from, from romanos that's a great movie i, don't, I love seeing I boobies <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just I, yeah marcus yeah. psp was a great promo and i liked kevin butler like sure. he's fictional kevin butler was cool yeah like honestly xbox could use a kevin butler yeah like, i love you sarah you're gorgeous and brilliant and phil i love you but it, it, too easy to villainize a real person when they let you down if it's a fictional character, there is a, an element yeah. to it. But also, can I, also notice, I, I think some companies, specifically uh, third-party publishers, don't listen to their PR firms, and they just do. And then they're like, whoops, should have listened. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, I just see so many people that we know in the PR space, which we have a unique inside, too, because we sure. connect with PR companies. That are like, I don't know why they are choosing to do X or Y oh. about it. And it's very... like. Uh, and an, a separate but similar example would be like WV. <clears throat> they need to go through Fair. so many levels before they can tweet or contact or communicate. Right. And by then, you go two weeks between Suicide Squad tweets. Hello? You're supposed mm -hmm. to be promoting your game, fixing whatever. I'm so stoked for Joker to try out season one. Yeah. But the communication for it's Suicide been poor. Squad, it's been very yeah. poor. And that sucks yep. because... I've gotten to know a few of them thanks to you, Ains. A few of those devs I've been talking to in DMs, which I really enjoy. Nice. And um, for all my problems with that game, there's a lot of fun to be had. Yeah. And and no one's talking about it because they're not the PR is not there, but the PR yet. people that want to do it can't. By the way, they're limited. If you weren't aware, the Twitch drops for the Joker stuff started today. Ooh. So just Suicide Squad on Twitch, just watch the one who has drops enabled. I, it's cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it's also like when you see like the creators behind or, you know, we have the devs behind Call of Duty and Battlefield, like for the Marvel Rivals thing. It's like, 
that's such a buzzword. It's like, hey, remember these two games you really probably love or used to love? They're Frank from accounting's in this game. <laughs> you know, it's just like, <laughs> you know, and, and listen, sometimes it works to your benefit if you're Kojima um, or if you're uh, Miyazaki, right? Uh, or Miyamoto. Like that works. Crazy. Praise be. That's the only idolization that I'll allow. This <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, Miyazaki. Otherwise, get it out of here. Out of here. But like, <laughs> even like Miyazaki would even tell you, it's just like, like he, he's saying, like, I don't know if I have another one of these in me. I want to, you know, let my team, you know, grow and direct, and I could be shepherding them. And I'm like, that's how you do it. Um, the guy and that, I told him, shut up and keep working. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> never him. Never before Halo came out. Ames was like, "Get back to work." Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, like, even uh, the guy from Tango GameWorks who just left, he, you know, uh, who I think helped make Resident Evil or, or whatever have you. Like, he was all about like fostering the next creators. I think we need to be doing more of that as well. So it's not just like a hey the next Cory Barlog game. It's like hey, this is someone who was under the tutelage of X Y and Z. That's going to become uh, a a bit more important. It's about how they share their creativity uh, as as great artists yeah. do. So. And I think they should shepherd that. I think that um you know, I I I I I'm not a fan of Kojima. I've made that very clear for years. Um I and I I take the piss out of them. Um, I've got nothing against the guy, obviously, personally, but I, I do you one like of the many like reasons. I'll never make fun of Zack Snyder. They're <laughs> so up their own ass. <laughs> one of the many reasons I, I joke Miyazaki versus Kojima is because of the arrogance factor. Kojima, it doesn't matter if you want to admit it or not. He's an arrogant MFer, um, and he's really full of himself, and that's okay. He's made a name for himself, whatever it is, but Miyazaki's like the most humble dude. And you can see it when he speaks. You can see it in interviews. You can see it in, uh, to your point, Joe, his kind of discussions around bringing the next level of talent up and how he curates that. And I love seeing that stuff. And I think we need more of that out of the, the what we would consider the brilliant minds in the industry. Yeah. Um, I know that's one of the problems some people have with Ken Levine, right? Is that he's he's created some revolutionary games or you know top tier games in the Bioshock series in particular, but he's got a pretty negative reputation in terms of working with him. Um, mm. I don't know how much of that is true. I don't know. I'm just that's out there. So I well, that. yeah. th think about all the head of their time, brilliant minds in gaming. Some of them self-destruct. Some of them fall under their own weight of their own genius or rushed fame. I'm thinking in this moment right now, I'm thinking about Cliff Lazinski, who I really enjoyed interviewing. But it feels like as you watch his socials, like like he's not happy or something's not right. And he made freaking the the unreal engine and worked on Fortnite. he worked on gears he worked on un, the unreal tournament his genius eventually kind of collapsed in on itself kev levine like what have you done lately bro i don't know like judas could be amazing right amy hennig okay where are you at now jade raymond like listen you, that, that marvel 1943 trailer looks great <laughs> holy shit yeah. Yeah. Exa absolutely but sometimes when you're so good it it puts an air uh, to your name that you can live up to or you can kind of fall on the sword and fail. It's the die a hero thing, right? Neil Druckmann. Yeah, Neil Druckmann. Exactly. Like, I'm, dude, I can't. But but obviously <laughs> I'm in the minority. Like, I, and I get that too. But there is a level of, of over evangelizing, over celebritizing people. Going back to the point the of the start yeah. of this. Yes, 100%. Um, Miyazaki, praise be. Praise be. Um, <laughs> we learned nothing as well. We really wanted that. Rebel Moon was great. Believe me, uh, when, when the it. next From game comes out, obviously Beyond Shadow of the Earth Tree, if the game, you know, if it's a huge disappointment, I'll be the first to call it out. But oh Miyazaki has, um, it's not going to be. <laughs> From software, don't miss, man. <laughs> they don't miss, dude. I was, I was talking on SG the other day and I said, think about what they've done as a publisher, right? They had Bloodborne in 2015, one of the most celebrated games of the past decade, uh, Game of the Year contender. They sure. did Dark Souls 3 in 2016, a year later, Game of the Year contender, one of the most celebrated games of the year. Uh, they did Sekiro in 2019, Game of the Year winner at VGA's, super celebrated game. They did Elden Ring 2022, Game of the Year winner, oh, most God. celebrated game of all time. <laughs> like, they don't miss, dude. 
They no. just they continue to hit. So what I think we're we're trying to say to end off on this question is you get one false idol. <laughs> <You're> just one. <laughs> I'm not and, a religious man, so I'm no. choosing Miyazaki. I'm good. Yeah, exactly. To go. Exactly. My, yeah. my false idol was pretty goddamn great, and then he made Rebel Moon. So now I'm yeah. a little confused. Yeah. You, you you fell on your own sword on that one. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, will. That man should kill people. You're like, oh, shut up, dude. <laughs> he should. Maybe not a lot. <laughs> Maybe not a lot. Oh man. And I... Druckman, pull your thumb out, dude. Dude, let so let smart. go of the let go of the ego. Let's get Naughty Dog. Make Naughty Dog great again. That's what I'm trying to say. Naughty, Naughty Dog. Dog. Now that, that's a that's a statement. That's a <laughs> we got sure. another question or two in here. I feel like we do. We what might. Do? I don't know. I don't have any pulled up, but mm, take a look. Wanna... What we got? Anyone got a question for us? Talk about? Another he said, I see Rick said Paul Tassi posted some incredibly negative opinions about Joker update. Yes, two hours after it released. So that's about right for Paul Tassi. Uh, um, oh shit. yeah that's about right yeah. i like how we're not even holding back you know i'm i'm oh yeah i think i'm over holding back i think it's like i don't care yeah i think it's yeah i think i am on if you make lazy content that's just based off reddit posts all right i've said it before i've literally been in the review discord private discords with a lot of these guys they don't know what Bro. the hell they're talking about when, when he, they like, are clueless he has, let me let me tell you something. When he had the fucking audacity of this bitch to go, uh, you know, I you know I love Dragon's Dogma and everything, but I can't like the the camp the you know the camp materials take too much of my bag. And I think Jez Corden's like, mate, you can just hand that over to your pawn, and you can like you don't have to hold on to the to the camp materials yourself to make a camp in Dragon's Dogma, dude. Like it's how do you not know that? And I'm like, you got a code for this. Like how do you? There, there's something when when you're when you there's some stories I could tell when yeah. you when you see the lack of uh a, a, you know achievement percentage on some of these trophies that I'm popping I'm like woo we mm -hmm. how did you review this I had oh, um, dude I can't tell you how many reviews I've done and I get fifty per, more than fifty percent through the game and the achievements go from like two percent to like zero point one. Mm -hmm. And then I see those people with written reviews up, and I'm like, "You're killing me, guys! Like, you didn't even play this game." Stop no, we it. had we had a good debate on that years ago. And I can't find that what, comment, Luke. I, I'll, I'll read it. It's from Rick Davis. Um, okay, it's I'm trying to pull it up me the than you. Oh, it was it was XCP and then Season Gaming. Um, but we had our good debate a while back on what you what it takes to review a game, and you and I Ains, disagree greatly on what you have yes. to do to review a game. But I think as long as somebody in shares with their audience their experience yeah. what it is that they're reviewing we're fine but when you pretend like you finish the game pretend like you go through um then you're full of shit and you need yeah. to knock it off and that, it, and that yeah. hurts me because like for for us with the dragon's dogma thing um i was just like listen i have not beaten it yet i i've had 20 plus hours and eight of those were mistake hours and so it's just like i'm very in this is my very you know, surface level impressions of, mm -hmm. um, and you got to make a game that big. Right? Yeah. Like that's the key. Yeah. yeah some games you can review in five hours. You can. Some in 10. Yeah. Dragon's Dog was not yeah. one of them. And I put that game down and I love Dragon's Dog, but I put it down. I was like, I need, I'm not Real here talk? for it right now. I, I don't think I'm here for it right now because I'm sick and I just came from PAX. I'm like, how does everything work again? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's one of those. It's one of I, those. I've got a uh, Rick's comment here, but yeah, no, I agree. I think, um, We've talked ad nauseum about that, but I, I generally agree with you, Luke. Like the the only thing is, you know, my big thing to your point was don't call it a review. It's not mm -hmm. a review right. unless you play the full product. It's just not. Mm -hmm. um, we joke about it all the time. You wouldn't watch half a movie and then review the movie. You wouldn't listen to four songs of a 10 song album and review the album. You just wouldn't, um, especially when games are designed almost like movies where you have a middle and you have a climax. Right. So a lot of the, uh, uh, uh. especially in story moments, a lot of that comes late in the game that you yeah. obviously have an experience. So anyway, uh, here's Rick's comment. OK, Rick says uh, piggybacking on the discussion you were having a bit ago. How do you guys find the sources, writers, etc., that you like to follow or support? Um, I have my answer. Do you guys want to go first, or do you mean to? Yeah, be shout out to Zermina Khan, uh, and what? also shout out. Uh, oh, I was Khan. looking at our chat. I'm like, who? I don't see that person. Uh, she she <laughs> writes for PlayStation Lifestyle, and she is she's really cool. great because I think a lot of her stuff is like no bullshit. This is the facts you need to know. Um, I'm I'm here to get you in and out. Um, I mm -hmm. do genuinely like 
uh, most of the VGC stuff. Um, Eurogamer, I also enjoy quite a bit. Um, and then, like, so, like, if I'm looking for stuff in the trophy room, genuinely speaking, I'm doing uh, PS Lifestyle VGC Eurogamer. You should be noticing a pattern. And then I'll be going on to, like, PlayStation Universe or, you know, GameSpot or whatever. But genuinely, if I'm looking for game news, ironically, I get it from... I, I get the, the the mumblings on Twitter, and then I go to Zarmina, I go to VGC, and then I go to either IGN or uh, GameSpot. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, sorry, Luke, go ahead. No, if you, I went first last time. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, yeah, for me, um, it's more about individual people um, because, you know, I find that um, every outlet, especially the bigger ones, obviously with bigger staff, have... Uh, people that vary in quality and vary in opinion and vary in, you know, all types of things, right? Like, so I'll shout out someone like Rebecca Valentine over at IGN who does uh, phenomenal, really, really great work. Just great person. She does great work. She's done some investigative work recently, which I thought was really well done. And quite frankly, it's pretty rare in today's yeah. industry, going back to Luke's comment earlier about journalism, gaming journalism dying, which sadly it is. Um all jokes aside uh, that I can make, uh, I will shout out Travis here as a game reviewer. Um, I have reviewed several games with Travis, as has Alex in the chat, as have other people at SG. Travis puts in the time. He does not screw around on reviews. Like he does, he's one of the few people I could name that I know do as much or even more at times for a review than I do. And that's pretty rare. Um, so uh, I'll shout him out. I think he does a really good job in, in yeah. game reviewing, which is probably why he's grown so much at IGN. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? In terms of how many he did like 25 reviews last year to a month. Of course. Um, so uh, I, I think that and then I think, you know, there's there's some people whose opinions I don't agree with necessarily, but that I respect that they are intelligent enough to speak about them in a way um, and present a, an opinion that isn't just the echo chamber. Yeah. So you know, people like Colin, right? Mo Moriarty, who there's a lot I don't agree Ooh. with. Him. <laughs> there's a lot I don't agree with him. And, and right. we've had a show, we've done a couple shows together mm -hmm. where we've gone back and forth a little bit about things. But I do like that he at least, you, when you look at the situation between Last Stand, right? And Kind of Funny. Mm -hmm. um, and nothing against Kind of Funny, but Kind of Funny is the... This they is lost sound their harsh. way. They lost this their is going to sound harsher than I mean it to, but they are the generic. Um, They're kind of bread. just yeah, exactly. They're the generic game cup, popular game coverage. We're going to do what's popular type thing, and that has a place if you want it to. Obviously, they have a big mm -hmm. audience, sure. Sure. but um, I do appreciate someone like Colin, even if I don't agree with him on a lot of things, having the balls to just go out and say no. That's you know we need a different kind of viewpoint on certain things and. Yeah you know, putting that out. So there's a lot of different things I look at, but nowadays it's really about maturity, um, understanding the industry, at least to a base level, um, and having the uh, willingness to go against the grain rather than the people who just want to just parrot everything uh, or, or the opposite, as we've joked about, just light fires for no reason. Yeah. Shout out to Boogie2988, you know. I um oh my god, what the hell's going on he, with that dude? He really I mean, oh my gosh. It's, speaking Hold of people that lost their way, let me tell you something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yikes. But yeah, but no, like sorry, go for it, Luke. I just want I, I wanted to actually I have something else to say. <laughs> I knew it. I, I did you see me stop? Like I knew. <laughs> yeah. Um I tend to fall in line with both of you quite a bit on those those statements. The one thing I want to add is that I've had to suspend my ego at various times in order to appreciate some of the journalism that's taking place because I've been burned by IGN. I've been burned and, and really let down by Kind of Funny, who I once held in very high regard. And then when I see that they want regurgitated statements or when I see like... I think they've really gone downhill. Truly, sincerely. It really breaks my heart because I really it's loved shame. the beginning. Um, and then, you know from they all kind of just became samey and and intentionally going with the, the popular thing and they stopped being respectful i think to their audience and outside creators but but that's not this isn't a kind of funny right my, my bigger thing is i really like steven Satillo. one of his favorite people is is ethan gouch for e ekotaku i have no respect for him whatsoever 
He, mm. I don't enjoy his content in the slightest. Neither of those things stop. Neither should negate the other, right? Liking Colin should mean you can't like kind of funny. Shouldn't mean you are objectively anti one thing or another. And I think my ego has to be put in check. I I also love Zarmina Khan. Big shout out to her. Love Rebecca Valentine. I'm not mm-hmm. a big IGN fan anymore because of the way they've handled several situations. But Rebecca, which, that's Travis, which we've got, go. which we've got <laughs> on Travis's case on Bitcast as if yeah. he owns it or something. We're like Travis, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing over there? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Why are you yeah. making that post? No, yeah, yeah like it's, when it comes to uh, get paused. Yeah, I agree um, with you because I'm I'm the same way. I agree. Yeah. With you. So like for me, uh, I I generally don't listen to Colin much. Only on some of the bigger topics, so that like after the fact, I can listen and go, hey. What, what what's the angle that he had that we didn't or what was the angle that we had that they didn't um and like it goes the same for like ps i love you or like beyond um and so like for me i i do think that there is there is a disconnect between like some of the bigger outlets for sure um that's why like you know for me like i'm not as into the kind of funny uh, scene as i once was i'll pop in every now and again and see what's up and see what they ha- they have to say but like for me it is more about like yeah there's armina cons rebecca valentine's jason shires steve tutillo's those names that are actually curating and having the conversations around the news i also do like jeff grubb quite a bit i find as i've gotten older a lot of my tastes are starting to align with his um so like there are people You've that like gotten older as I've gotten older Christ. in my in my age, <laughs> but no, like it's um, and I think that's the same. Like, yeah, growing out of kind of funny, I used to be huge into kind of funny. It's the reason why I know Kyle, um, and now being like a little bit older, and like maybe that content just doesn't speak to me because of my age. But like, Could even be. with like someone like like Colin, who like I disagree on almost all the things. <laughs> I literally was kind of on his show because I called him out. Yeah, and basically said his opinion was idiotic. Yeah. on twitter and he reached out to me and said come on the show you remember that luke because mm-hmm. you were like he wants to debate you on this i was like that's fine i don't care sure and um, i gained and a lot of respect for how he handled that by the way me too Changed that's where opinion. the respect came from because we started talking through email and i think he then found out who i was and kind of looked up some of my content and realized i was not just some random youtube bullshitter Bozo, yeah. and we started talking and he's like why don't we just do a show together and talk about a cool topic and i'm like yeah that's great let's do it mm-hmm. yeah so like but like even him like sometimes when i listen to him I'm like oh yeah no like some of the gaming stuff like yeah I de- it definitely resonates with me outside of the other stuff um but like i know like the sweet baby ink stuff we would have polar opposite opinions on <laughs> that being said um you know for for where we're at in coverage it's just understanding who you're getting your information from it's okay if you if you're listening to you know i don't know you're listening to my show and go okay i know he's a you know i know he's a playstation guy i know he's gonna have some innate biases here as long as you know that walking in uh, that's fine but if you think what i'm saying is gospel that's scary. Please don't. <laughs> you know, uh, so th- that's the that's the important thing. Well, and, yeah, I'll just add like Alex has been here hanging out with us, too. And if you don't know, Alex is a member of SG and does reviews for us. Has done a lot of reviews, actually, in the last year. Big games, too. You know, I talked um, about Suicide Squad. I enjoy talking. Yes, about yes. He's he's a little more down on Suicide Squad than uh, me and uh, Zach are. Um, but he just he and finished... I are in alignment. I'm sorry. He and oh, I agree fine. about the game. Yeah. and disagree with you guys about the game but then we all enjoy playing it too which is really yeah. i've enjoyed that discussion getting to deal yeah, with yeah. him he's been a great great no, Alex is awesome um but you know he'll tell you as well we have a lot of uh ribbing that we do on each other about our reviews and our thoughts on games in the sg chat the staff chat but one thing i always encourage right like when alex puts up a review and review score he's put up reviews where i completely disagree with the score you know, we're on two different wavelengths. That's okay. You know, that that's his opinion. And I, I always want to be an outlet as small as we are compared to the big guys. But I think we should always kind of champion different opinions. Um, and to your guys' point, just, you know, you find the person that you vibe with or someone that you may not vibe with, but that you respect enough to listen to what they have to say. And of course, I'll shout out Hogue, you know, because Hogue's a big proponent yeah. of that because Hogue challenges all kinds of stuff. And Hogue, 
simultaneously will have opinions that I think are 100% valid and five minutes later say something that I think is completely off the wall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes he just <laughs> wants to stir the pot. Yeah, he does. Like, he does, on, man. Yeah, but he but he does challenge the he does challenge the consensus, which I appreciate. Right? He's sure. like he's very he doesn't he doesn't argue or demean. You know what I mean? He's open to debate and conversation, which I think we all should be. Yep. Yeah, Sam. But uh, when he talks about uh, Star Wars, he's being a real poopy head. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, him. You should hear him and Travis go at each other, particularly about Last Jedi. Oh, I'd rather not. When they start in, <laughs> I'm like, well, that's my bit cast for the month. <laughs> not I even the pull day. Them back, yeah. yeah, I have to pull them back. But oh my God, their they're offline debates about Last Jedi are like books long. You guys will oh, be. Sure. I've told them, I was like, why haven't you guys done an episode about this yet? Just go on Hoag's channel and do a 1v1 on Last Jedi because it'll be like four hours long. And it'll be I hilarious. enjoyed those debates, but I enjoyed them four years ago during COVID when we had nothing else to do. <laughs> now I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. Like we used to play Battlefront 2 and have that argument. Remember that, Joe? Mm -hmm. We would oh, talk yeah. all of it. We had a blast during COVID uh, talking about Last Jedi because that's what kept us alive. We were like, what can we debate that's silly? <laughs> oh, the lasers, the laser sword movies. That's Let's right. talk about that. Well, Barry, we don't as... talk about Dan's hatred of Nolan. Dan's weird. Okay. Wait, he doesn't like that. Nolan. He, he does not like Christopher Nolan. No. Dude, what the fuck does Dan you, like? Yeah. Talk about talk about taking. Yeah, that's true. Take it. Talk, talk about taking your thumb out of your ass. Did you see Nolan <laughs> is getting knighted? He's getting what? He's getting knighted. knighted. He's gonna be Sir Christopher Nolan. Good. Wow. Well, I had no, no idea about what? that. He's a movie maker. What do you? Yeah, doing? I don't think he should. That's so, crazy. But Sir Patrick Stewart. Sir Elton yeah, that's, John. That's different. Elton no, John. That's different too. How's that different? What makes movies? <laughs> one's an actor. One's Captain Picard. <laughs> one made a one made a, a, a biopic that almost made a billion dollars. But Captain Picard, he said, make it. That's so. what it was. Royalty was yeah, like, yeah. oh, you made a billion with a B. Okay, we got you. <laughs> exactly. We can. You can buy into knighthood. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, come on. That, that everything went downhill after Interstellar. Moment. I'm just saying. I never saw Interstellar. Interstellar was <laughs> god tier. What? I heard it's really it sad. It is S tier. End. And I'm so never. Know. Are, are you being? You're you're joking never. right now, right? No, it, I know. I've I don't never know. Seen it. It's some stupid ass shit at the end. Like it's a I've dumb thing tenant. at the end. I've seen Tenant, and That's I thought what, Inception. What is, is actually amazing. happening right now? Inception. We need to yeah. pause the show. Like I don't know who you're. How mad at have right you now? not seen Interstellar? I'm okay, mad at there. Joe. I it's just so haven't. good. It's really good. That I'm movie's like goaded, man. Come on. I, I'm he guessing he's cry. aged and he's watching his kids die or something. That's what he's No, doing. no, you gotta watch that movie. You gotta man. watch Come it. On. It's really it? good. Dan's in the chat. He just, heard Nolan, dude. He has a <laughs> Nolan alert. I'm telling you. He That's has a, it. Can we talk about yep. Dune Part Two? Can we close the show on that? I've never seen it. <sighs> I don't go. Well, that's a little more forgivable. It just came out, but yeah. it yeah, is a fantastic movie. Not and uh, Villeneuve is like Villeneuve is he's showing his chops as a director, man. Yeah, I mean Spielberg's just like he's. This is so should I watch the first one? Is it worth watching the first? Oh, one? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. It's homework. Like the first, just movie... watch them both. Literally watch them both. Like when they're yeah. on, when you can sit at home for a day, watch them both. Yep, the first movie to me is like homework. It's like this is a. I know. It's shot brilliantly, like you know, cinematic. Like it's beautiful looking, sounding thing, but it's a lot of world building. And then two's like, listen, we set the foundation of what's happening. Now we're just gonna go. See, that's what I'm hoping happens with Rebel Moon because Rebel Moon's all world building and it's kind of boring. And no dumb. one watched I, that movie. No one. Come on. uh, I'm not sure if you heard him tell everybody. If you <laughs> watched it, then then Barbie or some shit. I was wait, like, wait, the director like, of the movie told me told us that people watched it. Okay, I was like, good to know. Zach, please be quiet. Please, <laughs> you're shattering my world. <laughs> Shut up. He's, yeah, he's douchebag Ken. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We gotta laugh. Yeah. Uh, Dan said his ears were burning. All right. Oh, by the way, before we close. I went, you know, they had that Immortals of Avium special for like everybody but me yeah. for nine bucks. Yeah, I, I, I never popped for me. Copies to people. I tried to gift Why? it to you and they wouldn't get it because I tried to gift. I gifted one the first time, but you can only give one at a time during these, those specials. I gifted Ooh. one to a student who got me a gift card that he shouldn't have gotten me for my birthday. So I bought him something with it, you know, just to nice. kind of like return the money. Right. Um, and I tried to send you one. And Luke, it wouldn't Luke. What? I don't care about your students, okay? I needed a copy of the game. You make more money than Joe and I combined? 
for the next three years, you make that in a month. Buy Immortals of Avium, bro. It's good. Uh, it's on PS Plus starting in a couple days. So yeah, yeah I'll have it. Soon. I thought PlayStation Plus is really good this month. I thought it was, a lot of people were giving them crap for it. I'm like, yeah, what are you talking about? This is a good month. PS, yeah. PS Plus and Game Pass both delivered this month. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. Also, so I'm looking forward hear, to playing it anyway. Hear? The gold rush, it dried up. The indies aren't getting money anymore for Game Pass or something. It's dead. Game Pass. Uh, they're not. They're not doing it anymore. Yeah. It's over. I know. I knew. I knew this day would come. Yeah. 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 Which you think was going to happen? PS4 used to love indies, and now they're or PlayStation used to love I know. indies. Now it's, I know. it's like, people, what do you think was going to happen? Again, it goes back to the the creating the click. It's like, remember when PlayStation Four was the indie box? Yeah. Remember yeah. that's what it was all. And then they're like, oh wait, now here's our big heavy hitters. And then yeah, they're like, ebb and flow, bro. You Bye. know the crazy thing about that too is like House Mark, right? Who which made Returnal, which if you haven't played Returnal, go play fucking Returnal. Oh. Um, you know they started. They were part of that indie craze on the early PS4 with um, um Res- Rezo Gun. Yep. Was it? Yeah, Rezo Gun. Was, so, no, was, was another one. It was Super Stardust HD. Was the Thank first you. one for us, Mark. That's it. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, but anyway, my point being that that helped them grow popularity, get, you know, grow their studio, which eventually led to Returnal, which eventually led to them now being owned first party um, and probably creating something else that's going to be brilliant. So, like, oh. there, there, there's a path there that you can help those studios, you know, develop upwards, which, again, goes back to the Larian conversation. But anyway. Yeah. Love them. All right, boys. Are, All right, we re- boys. are we ready to go? Yeah. Um, I'll say you? thank you guys for for being here. It was really cool to be back and see everybody in chat coming out supporting it. We love the comments. We were reading all of them as we went. Um, so thank you guys for that. Yeah, you can find exactly. me on. Yeah, you you can find me on socials at Insipid Ghost and um, working on getting XCP to to go live and memberships and stuff just to try and diversify because social spaces are tough. So if you're willing to go check out XCP, really enjoy that. Did an interview with. Tales of Kanzara's Abu Kabar Kazim, uh, Salim, nice. pardon me, um, and working on some new ones, including the Tales of Iron developer and a few others. Uh, so I'll working both. on that stuff, and I'd love for you guys to check that out. That's cool. what you got for me. I was actually very disappointed because I shared it out, and I saw your interview with uh, the Tao um, director, and mm-hmm. I thought that was awesome because I think that game looks incredible, and I like the story behind it as well. And it did not do as well for you as I hoped it would, and that really it didn't. Me off. So I shared it twice, which I don't usually do. Thank just you. trying to uh, spread the word, but um, yeah, it's annoying, man. I hate when that happens, and that goes back to the YouTube nonsense that we're all kind of dealing with right now. Yeah, yep. it was a good interview too. Like, like Abu gave some great info, and I really enjoyed it. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that game, I, I really do think that game's going to be special. So. Same. Yeah. Thank you, by the way, for sharing it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, on the SG side, obviously, I think anyone who hangs out here or watches BitCast knows that I've been out of the loop for some family stuff for uh, the past almost month. Um, it's been tough, uh, but we're back to normal. Um, we had BitCast last weekend. Uh, Easter is this Sunday, and I know Dan and Hogue had plans. So even though Travis will be back, we're not doing a show. So we won't be back, the four of us, until week after this weekend. Um, but other than that... Uh, <laughs> um we just did it um I know. pretty much um but uh i do have uh i've had sitting over there for a month now the uh large prime one studio nathan drake statue Ooh. um so i'm gonna be doing that unboxing hopefully tomorrow or saturday i want to do it last week and got tied up so that should be real soon i am reviewing this poly mega box which is like a retro thing um okay. kind of going through that as well so i have some coverage on that and lastly uh, i will have a video and an article up on some of the xbox stuff we talked about and just some more kind of deep dive on some of the um business kind of perspectives there hopefully tomorrow as well I've, i'm like halfway through it so yeah yeah well listen um you can follow me over at mr Badbit, where sometimes elon lets me tweet <laughs> you know what's going on over there <laughs> i tweeted three things you gotta that stop being like, oh. so racist because you know he hates that <laughs> Yeah. Question God, mark? Nice. So I don't know. Um uh, you can find the trophy room at PS Trophy Room, but like why why even at that point, you know? It's like, God, it's, you're just being suppressed all the time. Seriously, the Twitter suppression algorithms it sucks. Anyway, that means you can follow the show, the Trophy Room PlayStation Podcast, made by the players for the players, uh, where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest and greatest in all things PlayStation each and every Wednesday night over at youtube.com slash at PS Trophy Room at 8 p.m. And then the following next day on your RSS feed of choice. Uh, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. 
you know, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And then you can rate the show, Costco up there as well. Rate us five stars. Uh, maybe we'll read a review. I don't know. The next episode, nine weeks. Yeah, from. our audio listeners has grown for some strange reason, d- despite our lack of cadence. There you go. Here. Um, there you go. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you do want to catch the show on audio, we are on all the same places you can find Bitcash, Trophy Room, and XEP. So, uh, check us out. Um, that said, everybody, I'm going to go. I'm gonna go play some Hell Divers. Um nope. because Hell Divers is a really good game. And we I gotta protect democracy um uh, because it's under attack. And um there's now things that fly, there's things that throw up on you. Um and I was not at P. Diddy's house. I didn't really like when Luke said that in the beginning, it really <laughs> threw me off my game. Um I really didn't like the Epstein Island jokes either. So if you're like, oof, that wasn't really my jam. I'm so I'm 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 with you, I agree. Um, you know, so uh, anyway, um, I love you guys. I miss you, and I keep keep ca- keep casting that co-op. <laughs>